Hi, I'm Ned Ned Nerp. I'm a schizophrenic on YouTube. I make videos about questions that people have about schizophrenia. This video I'm going to talk about some common misconceptions about schizophrenia or basically myths that should be busted. These are common ideas that go around that are really just add to stigmatization and marginalization of people with schizophrenia. I'm going to discuss four common myths. Schizophrenia is a rare condition. People with schizophrenia are dangerous. Schizophrenia is split personality or multiple personality. And four, people with schizophrenia are without ability to be helped. That there's nothing for them, that you can't help them because it's hopeless. And... First, the myth that schizophrenia is rare. This is played out when a family member becomes ill and it is an absolute shock that such a thing could happen at all to their family member. It doesn't run in the family. There was no really obvious warning signs. There wasn't a long time of warning signs. Sometimes schizophrenia and psychosis happen rapidly. Sometimes they happen slowly, but without a doubt, it's not rare. With around 7 billion or so people on Earth, that means there's about 70 million schizophrenics on Earth. There, there, there's, there's about, about a 1 in 100 chance uh, that any person will develop schizophrenia at some point in their lifetime. It's always existed, too. It's maybe more described in recent literature, recent past couple centuries, but there's always been mad people or the, the, the people that filled up sanitariums and asylums. They were often rudely and crudely treated by various empires throughout the ages, people that were just um, cast aside. And that's why so many people today who have schizophrenia are poor, that are, are hard of luck and have need help and need lots of support and there's a lot of stigma towards schizophrenia that it's something that a human shouldn't be and that means that more people go without help than than they could get the second myth i'll talk about is the idea that people with schizophrenia are inherently dangerous. I think this is mostly due to the etymology of psychosis, which is the drastic disconnect from shared reality, and psychopathy, which is uh, sociopaths, serial killers. Hardly any schizophrenic is responsible for murder compared to the sociopaths, which are often people that don't look odd at all from the outside. Psychopaths and serial killers often look totally normal to people and they hide very well and they carry on their very evil activities. And they do so without remorse. Most schizophrenics have lots of emotion, lots of compassion, and there is the thing that a schizophrenic, when they're having their hardest moments, they definitely look scary. There's, there might be shouting, there might be aggressiveness, there might be um, uncontrollable behavior, but really, most schizophrenics do not do violence. They are actually prone the other direction. They do less violence than some other groups, whatever whatever you I don't want to talk about the other groups or who's more violent than schizophrenics that's not the point just the idea that in general schizophrenics are no risk of harm to another person they're more a risk of harm to themselves the second myth I'll talk
The third common misconception I'll discuss is the idea that people with schizophrenia have split personality or multiple personality. Uh, multiple personality disorder is actually something else and it's way more rare than schizophrenia. Schizophrenia isn't about shifting personality or being very different in one moment to the next. That's just the stigma. There's often quiet and suppression and those things going on in a schizophrenic's life and mind and they might be quiet and then when they are psychotic and having a hard time having an episode uh, they might seem to be drastically out of proportion in their character and mood as to when they were not having an episode and that can seem like a turnaround of the personality However, uh, schizoph schizophrenia, the schizo means split off or broken or shattered and the phrenia means mind, so it's more like a broken mind. When I'm doing well, my thoughts are connected, I'm able to remember what I'm talking about and my language is not disturbed, but when I'm ill, I can seem disoriented. I won't necessarily look like I'm in my body. I'm detached, disoriented, uh, dissociated sometimes. And those things have some commonality with multiple personality disorder, but it's not the same where there's like just a hiding person inside or what seems like that, which is the common view of multiple personality disorder. Yeah. Schizophrenics are split off or broken from reality, but that's only when they're sick. Their mind doesn't disappear. They're just, there's just certain times when an episode is happening that choices aren't being made wisely or to the best benefit of the person who has, who has schizophrenia. But uh, it's not about split personality. The third... The final myth I will discuss in this short video has to do with the idea that people with schizophrenia cannot be helped. I often get leveled with a criticism that my schizophrenia doesn't seem real or that I seem so well adapted and that may be true that I'm well adapted by now. Uh, I've had very hard times in the past and even in the last five years I've had two hospitalizations that both lasted two and a half or so months and that meant I was, according to the doctors in British Columbia here, I was uh, not fit to be in control of my own decision making. That was how far off I was. I don't generally make videos in that hardest of hitting of times so people on the other side of the YouTube screen do not you, you don't know what I'm like at all times so I'm eloquent now I'm clear to understand now that's not how it is all the time sometimes I'm very confusing and very confused <laughs> and it, But one thing I do is I take medication and I accept my doctor's advice. And I accept that my family um, has a beneficial outlook for me, that they want the best for me. And that means I'm supported. I have a great family support system and I have good friends and I have a little bit of work here and there that uh, gives me a little bit of thing to do and a little little bit of money. Um, but I often see in the comments to my videos people that are talking about themselves or about a family or friend who has schizophrenia or might have schizophrenia and is having a hard time. And to a lot of those viewers, a lot of those comments, they seem, it seems that the situation might be hopeless, that there's been a, either a long time of trouble and it just seems to be getting worse or not being treated and 
one commonality in a lot of those comments is the idea that the person is not accepting that they're schizophrenic but there's also it seems that there's just a lack of support for that person I think like if, if I didn't have people interacting with me on a regular basis and I was stuck alone at home and secluding myself and just bouncing around the delusional kind of thought processes having hallucinations if I didn't accept medication then there would be less hope but with the proper supports and proper motivations I think it is possible to recover and not live in so much suffering pain is inevitable but suffering doesn't have to be so constant um, but schizophrenics can be helped I have had a hard time at various points and mostly because of support and ability to reduce stress I've been able to have some happiness in my activities and uh, less despair, less fear, less paranoia and better connections with friends and family because I remain open to their criticisms and I try really hard and uh, if you have a friend or family member with schizophrenia try to be there for them as best you can don't just shove them away or shove their ideas away you don't have to feed delusions you don't have to lie about it but try to focus on other things focus on positive motivational factors that might assist somebody to reach out for help because hopefully there should be help around many corners. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye.